Harry's wife. Part 69.3 Hypocrisy Callie, move. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor, and you join me for further analysis of the situation that relates to Harry's wife. I'm going to go through several news articles that provide us with observations, commentary, additional news on what has been happening vis-a-vis -vis Harry's wife, and provide you with the analysis of what's actually occurring to enable you to understand the situation and to extend your knowledge of narcissism. I've created hundreds of videos about narcissism and whilst many of you do have an interest in Harry's wife, her behaviours and understanding it and also expressing your disapproval in the main of how she does behave, I'd also encourage you to access my other videos because they cover so many facets of the narcissistic dynamic and you'll find them both interesting, entertaining and above all enlightening. First of all we go to Fox News Channel with an article by Melissa Roberto that states Harry's wife, Prince Harry's new careers, lifestyle since California move are hypocritical source. Somewhat garbled headline there, let's find out what they're talking about. Harry's wife and Prince Harry have had quite a lot to say, naturally assertion of control, and do in their first year as California residents after notoriously stepping down as senior members of the British royal family. A representative for the Duke and Duchess of Sussex confirmed last summer that the couple purchased a home in Santa Barbara in July 2020. They have settled into the quiet privacy of their community since their arrival and hope that this will be respected for their neighbours as well as them as a family, a spokesperson said. Well, certainly their behaviour since they've arrived has not been quiet because they keep popping up absolutely everywhere. Hypocrisy, the need to assert control, draw fuel, receipt of residual benefits. The article continues, The duo has forged ahead on their plan to work independently as seen through their recent Netflix projects. What, which ones are those then? Not seen anything appear yet. Through Archwell Productions and separate buck deals. Their newly established lifestyle in the United States with two little ones is a stark contrast to the dark picture the couple described about their time in the palace during their two-hour sit-down interview with Oprah Winfrey in March. Harry's wife, who was an actress, she still is, before she became the Duchess of Sussex, is originally from Los Angeles, the <coughs> 39-year-old's home state has provided the couple's two children, Archie, two, and Lilibet, Lily Diana, almost two months. Opportunities, Harry, 36, insisted, weren't afforded to him as a young member of the royal family. But a source close to the family claimed that the couple's newfound freedom on the West Coast appears to have been part of a bigger plan the couple organised all along. Harry's wife should have known what it was like marrying into the royal family. Absolutely. She knew all about them, although of course she denied that, revision of history, and she will have been briefed and informed about what life was like. Indeed, she spoke about how her friends had warned her about joining the royal family, which demonstrates the contrarian position between being advised that it would be difficult for her and then complaining about it afterwards as if to say, I never knew. The source quotes, I don't know if this was all part of the bigger plan of things they talked about between them, but for Harry's wife to cause all the big waves in the royal family just to go back to a Hollywood career, which one's this? I've not seen her in any films recently, and break hundreds of years of traditions is unprecedented, said the family insider. The source said the couple's movements in the last year are questionable. Indeed they are. To want privacy and to demand this and say how deep of a depression Harry's wife fell in because of all of this and how she wanted to end her life, it sure doesn't seem like it now, the source claimed. Of course, the observation that would be made is that she feels a lot better because she's away from the royal family. The fact remains that what she was experiencing 
if correct, ought to have led to her seeking help. It was easy enough to do so. She didn't do so. And, nor has she, so far as we are aware, sought help since. This tends to suggest that what was said was said in the moment, driven by her narcissism by way of a pity play. It was the revision of history and truth, and was designed by her narcissism, although she believed it at the time, because remember of her remember her unaware status, it was done to assert control over Oprah, who was there wielding all the forensic ability of a limp stick of celery, and over, of course, the audience. Representatives for Harry's wife and Harry did not immediately return Fox News's request for comment. Earlier this month, the Duke of Sussex confirmed he would be publishing a memoir with Penguin Random House in late 2022. Some have assumed the memoir will be a new opportunity to Harry to continue his public bashing of his family and the royal institution. However, the Duke insisted the upcoming memoir will be written from a perspective not as the prince I was born, but as the man I have become. And we know whose words he's parroting there. Harry's wife's family source further claims Harry was in on Harry's wife's so-called plan to return to America. I don't feel for Harry. I think he's part of it too. They have to know what they're doing, the insider said. This is where the insider has got it wrong. Harry might be aware of there was an intention to move, but it was instigated by Harry's wife. When the repeated detractors began to increase in number, this repeatedly threatened her control. Her attempts to repeatedly get her own way within the royal family, which were met with refusal, met with accusations of bullying, met with resignations, met with William's responses, again all threatened control. And as you know from my work, where the narcissist has control threatened, the responses are one of three. The narcissism directs the narcissist to either assert control directly, known as the hoover. So this means, for instance, perhaps laying on the charm or insulting somebody, physically assaulting them, giving them a word salad, a circular conversation and many other direct manipulations. Alternatively, an indirect assertion of control through smearing or triangulation, or third, withdrawal. Active withdrawal, which is where the narcissist physically removes themselves from you, or puts the phone down on you, for instance, or doesn't reply to a message, or passive withdrawal, where the narcissist isn't interacting with you and stays in that position of withdrawal. Here, Harry's wife essentially ran away. Her narcissism directed her to withdraw to Canada and then to the United States. It wasn't part of some master plan. Of course, there would have to be a degree of planning to move somewhere, to find somewhere to live, and those things associated with making a move across the Atlantic. But there wasn't some master plan where she decided, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and find a prince, then I'm going to marry into the family. After a while, I'll decide that I'll leave, take him with me, go to Canada, and then go to the United States. She would never plan that far ahead. Her narcissism doesn't work that way. Instead, she operated on a day-to-day -day basis, looking to assert control by trying to get this aged institution to accommodate her time and time again. When this didn't happen, she of course responded with the various manipulations that have been described elsewhere. But even those direct manipulations, the tantrums, the accusations, the pity plays, the complaints, when those didn't get her anywhere, the narcissism essentially said, this isn't working. We're not being able to assert control directly. Remember, she doesn't think this in her conscious mind. This is what the narcissism is doing. And then it caused her to beat a retreat. Basically, I remove myself from you because you are all horrible, racist, unsupportive individuals. The British media has it in for me. And therefore, who could blame me but want to depart from such a toxic environment? And of course, there are those that have fallen for this narrative. Many, of course didn't accept it at the time, and there are others, as they have seen the repeated behaviours, the repeated untruths and hypocrisies come out, realise what was actually going on, and that it was manufactured. 
not consciously, but unconsciously. And therefore, as a result of the repeated attempts to assert control failing, she was then caused by her narcissism to move first to Canada and then to California. Her narcissism directed her to retreat, basically, to friendly territory, to place herself amongst the woke, the individuals that would be supportive, that would sympathise with her, that would take her side on matters. Her narcissism recognised that and directed her, ultimately, to move there, something I predicted a long time ago. Harry was dragged along. He's on the leash. He didn't have any choice in the matter. He didn't plan it. He didn't sit down and say, hey, Megnut, let's get together and plan uh, a retreat from the royal family. Let's get out of here. Let's blow town. Let's get out of Dodge. She complained. She will have directly manipulated him with threat, with pity play, with insult, with triangulation, to cause him to agree that the best thing to do was to move. She'll have laid on a degree of charm. She may have offered a bit of spicy puntang for him. But more likely, it would have been repeated complaints about how nobody likes me, they all have it in for me, Kate hates me, William despises me, your grandma and granddad don't like me, the British media have got it in for me, many of the public don't like me, I don't know why we're bothering staying here. They're racist, unsupportive, my mental health is failing. And Harry, of course, as a combination of the manipulations and his own emotional thinking blinding him to what's going on, understandably fell for it. Most victims do, where they're the intimate partner primary source of the narcissist. They don't stand there and go, hang on a second, all of this is complete baloney. They believe it. Why? Well, their empathic traits are taken for a ride, compassion, caring, decency, etc. They're all corrupted by the emotional thinking to cause that intimate partner primary source to believe what they're being told. They can see the person is visibly upset because, of course, the narcissism selects that approach in order to convince the intimate partner primary source that they are actually upset. The waterworks are turned on. There might be a lack of interest, feigned depression, although the narcissist believes that it's real. An intimate partner primary source seeing all of this doesn't immediately, in a cold and callous and objective fashion, go, but wait a second, here you are, living in a gilded environment with no issues with regard to money, they've got servants and uh, courtiers running around after you. If you need a doctor, we can get one for you. Let's just sort this out. And you really, uh, I understand that you have some concerns, but these can easily be addressed. No, instead, driven by the manipulations and the desire to be helpful and supportive as a spouse would be, he falls for it. Many people have experienced the same situation. and Many of you listening will be nodding, knowing that you fell for this also that you wanted to try and repair things, to fix things, to help out, that the individual's complaints and woes and whining, you wanted to try and heal and fix the issues. That's part of your empathic nature. You didn't realise at the time you were being taken in. That awareness may have come at a later juncture. And Harry fell for it. So to suggest that he was somehow in on it isn't accurate, in that he went along with it because he had no choice. He went along with it because he thought it was the best thing to do based upon his wife's complaints. But there wasn't some master plan hatch between the two of them. The article continues. Last week, a source claimed to Fox News that all Harry's wife had to do was prep her family about her whirlwind romance to Harry as a way to prevent negative commentary from her estranged relatives. How do you break all these royal traditions? Claim that you want privacy, you want to go back to a normal life, and then just do the same shit that you were doing before. It's just all for show. It's unfortunate for the people she left in her wake, her own family, the source claimed. And of course, that is the typical behaviour of the narcissist. People are there purely for the provision of the prime aims, to be controlled to priorities with fuel, character traits and residual benefits. Family members are taken off the shelf, dealt with for as long as they're useful to us, and then popped back on the shelf. And there they may well remain for a long time, if it serves no purpose to take them back off. The insider spoke of having sympathy for Thomas Markle Sr. for being publicly humiliated in the wake of drama between the father-daughter duo that became public knowledge the week of the couple's 2018 royal wedding. 
Recently, the Duchess's father claimed he was willing to take the Sussex to court, threat, assertion of control, in order to meet his grandchildren. Now, she just goes back to her same old life without her father, who spent his entire life taking care of her, a sense of entitlement, lack of emotional empathy, putting her in the best schools and using every connection he had to take care of her, the insider claimed. Remember, from Thomas Markle Sr.'s position, all of that was done not from a position of emotional empathy, but was done for part of his own facade management and the assertion of control over his daughter. She, of course, receives all of those things and doesn't see it as anything that she should be thankful for, because, of course, from her narcissistic perspective, the world owes her a living. It's that huge sense of entitlement, the fact that everything should revolve around her. The source concluded Markle and Harry's latest passion projects are 100% hypocritical, as the two are doing more things to gain publicity. Indeed, but again the source doesn't understand what is actually behind that publicity. And it is the prime aims. Publicity is just a means to get to them. Harry's wife's comments about suicide and mental health issues do not relate to the ordinary people who have those struggles, the source explained. People are out here starving. Some people have just lost everything they worked so hard for in life because of COVID-19. Don't tell me you're supposed to sympathise with the ones who really have issues when you have a multi-million dollar problems. It's laughable. And indeed, that source identifies the hypocrisy. The narcissist sits in the ivory tower, claiming life is so difficult. Think Ellen DeGeneres, where she claimed that being in isolation was like being in prison. A crass comment, driven by a sense of entitlement, a lack of emotional empathy. And the merchants of Monty Shitshow will sit there, Harry, driven by his emotional thinking, and Harry's wife, driven by her narcissism, to make complaints about the supposed problems that they have, when all they come across as, as are as hypocrites, exhibiting a huge sense of entitlement, no real understanding of the way the world works, and that is typical of the delusion of many narcissists. The article continues, it appears, however, that Harry's wife has been taking more of a behind-the-scenes approach to supporting those suffering publicly and personally with mental health issues. Tennis star Naomi Osaka revealed this month that the Duchess secretly offered her kind words, assertion of control by benign support, after she withdrew from the French Open to take a mental health break. In April, Archwell Productions announced the multi-episode docuseries titled Heart of Invictus as a couple's first Netflix series. The couple's other passion projects include a Spotify broadcast named Archwell Audio. They released their first episode shortly before New Year's Day. The married couple's move to North America began in January 2020, following many months of reflection and internal discussions, they said in a statement at the time. The first move was to Vancouver, Canada before relocation to Los Angeles, where they reportedly were living in Tyler Perry's $18 million mansion. In March, Harry spoke to Winfrey, 67, In March, Harry spoke to Winfrey, 67, of the simple luxuries Archie has been able to enjoy in the United States that he didn't get to do as a kid due to media scrutiny, such as riding bicycles on the beach. Well, there is no beach in London. You'd have to go a little bit further afield. There's plenty of things that a young boy would be able to do. And within the privacy of grounds, etc. After all, he was less than two years old, and therefore it's not like he's going to need to be going to McDonald's every day, is it? This article is interesting because, of course, it demonstrates further the backlash that is occurring as more and more people recognise the hypocrisy of the behaviours of Harry's wife. But it also demonstrates, again, the lack of understanding that causes people to believe that certain things have been planned when they have not. And it causes them to believe that Harry was in on everything, Harry has very little choice in all of this. He is the victim of a narcissist. And, of course, the continued sustained application of the external stressor, which is the manipulative behaviour, pushes down his emotional empathy. He basically swallows the stories, swallows the pressure, swallows the smearing, and therefore his narcissistic traits of anger, argumentativeness, pride, vanity, etc. come to the fore, as they have in the past. 
and this causes him to behave in an entitled manner and causes him to often be tarred with the same brush as his wife. Of course, his narcissistic behaviours are similar to hers. They are narcissistic traits after all, but hers are driven by a pathological need for the prime aims. His are not. There are different drivers. Hers are entrenched, permanent, cannot be altered. His have become exposed because his emotional empathy has been reduced as a consequence of the repeated behaviours that he's subject to and the propaganda that is pushed in his direction. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.